Over the past couple of months, I have mentioned a few times that a computer such as a 2010 Mac Pro can still be somewhat relevant and has its case uses. We're gonna discuss that today. Okay, why are we even discussing this? How can I make the statement that a 2010 Mac Pro can even be somewhat relevant? Well, here's the thing is, when you spend the kind of money on an Apple product that they do cost, you want to be able to get your use out of them as long as possible and hope, and some people are really deluded in believing that they really are the greatest thing since sliced bread, um, that these things are going to work and they're going to work well and they're going to work a long time. Back when I bought this thing, I want to say I spent somewhere between eight and ten thousand dollars on it. Why? Well, I had upgraded the um, storage and as you know, Apple charges substantially more than retail for equivalent storage. I upgraded the RAM because Apple charges more than a retail for equivalent RAM and in fact they don't even give you relevant or current day type of hardware. Which that's a whole other topic. Um, and in this situation I have a dual 6 core machine. So I, I, when I got this I got it with the um, 12 core setup, uh, the 2.93 gigahertz processor. Um, and at the time for what I was using for it seemed blazing fast and you know really what gives Apple um, their I don't want to say credibility but the reputation is how easy it is to use their software their OS I wish I could just take the Mac OS and use that on a Windows machine or I say Windows machine but PC um, and have my own components, my own processors, and just be happy. I'd, I'd love to be able to build my own machine using just, the only thing from Apple that I want to use at all is just their OS. I'd want to use everything else that I use when I build a, a standard computer for gaming and, and whatever else. But unfortunately, you can't do that. It's kind of frustrating. So anyway, so I'm getting off topic uh, completely here. So why is it that I'd want to show that this is relevant? Well, because in some cases it is. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to run a couple benchmarks just so you can see where it stands in comparison to some of your brand new machines. Uh, and I'm going to be comparing it today. It's an unfair comparison, but it's what I have. I'm going to compare it to a 9900K, a 9700K, and this, uh, a Ryzen 1700. Those are the four processors that I currently have running in machines uh, from anything from here, just gaming to a computer I have at work. And I'm going to show you how a few things compare, such as render times in Premiere. Uh, I'm going to show you Cinebench scores. And just to give you an idea, is the feel as to why someone might want to continue to use this and be able to nurse it along for as long as possible, I guess. Here we are in Cinebench R15. Um, you can see the last time I ran it, I got a score of 1379, which is okay. I mean, if you consider the fact that this is a um, what is it now, a nine-year-old machine almost? Um, it works. I mean, this would be a score similar to what you would get on, let's say, a 7700K, you know, a four-core, uh, eight-thread. Yes, this is a 12-core, 24-thread uh, Intel Xeon X5670. Uh, they call it the Gulfstream processor. You can see that right here. Um, it's at 2.93 gigahertz. I've got this running in OS Mojave right now. You can see this right now here. And not that it affects the Cinebench score, but you do know that I also recently upgraded the um, processor. Or I'm sorry, not the processor, but the GPU in this machine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run this here. Why is this something that's kind of important to me? Well, I spent a lot of money on it for once, like I've already mentioned. Two, I have all of my photos on here for, man, I don't know, going back to 2000, 2001, um, slightly before my oldest daughter was born. Um, I used to do music recording and editing slightly. Uh, I'd use it for playing some games such as Star Wars, uh, what was it called, the uh, Knights of the Old Republic, I believe it was, K-O-T-O-R. Um, I'd use it for 
browsing and really that's what a Mac is, is for browsing and video editing and music editing, that kind of stuff. Obviously I don't do it professionally, um, but it still is somewhat relevant. As you can see, I got a score of 1379 again. Um, I mean, it is what it is. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna quit out of this and we're gonna go into um, some uh, Adobe here. And we're gonna go ahead and record this and um, see how long it takes to render a simple video. We're gonna go ahead and get our timer here. There you go, got our timer. And we are going to export this. Let's do this like I'm doing it for a uh, <clears throat> just like we're doing it for um I don't have recording this whole time. Okay, we got our sequence in, sequence out set. We're going to do it just a simple one. Uh, we don't need to use maximum depth. I don't use it for for uh, YouTube anyway. Save this to my desktop as project. All right. So we're going to hit start and export at the same time. Three, two, one. And we will come back once this is uh, finished up and see what we have for a total amount of time for the render project. Okay, here we are winding down and all done. So it took 29 minutes, 18 seconds. So we're gonna call it 29 minutes, 19 seconds due to the uh, 0.93 on there. Uh, that's to re render this um, simple video that I posted a couple of weeks ago that was, how long was this video? Uh, nine minutes and 23 seconds approximately it looks like. So um, not great, not horrible. But uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to post some uh, test scores for other rigs as well as Blender results, uh, Cinebench results, and then we will wrap up the video. As you can see, the Mac Pro does a decent job. No, it doesn't uh, fully compete with the numbers of the 9900K or the 9700K for that matter, or really even the 1700. However, uh, it still does fine. I mean, yes, the 9900K cuts about everything it does in half time-wise compared to the um, Mac Pro. Uh, the 2010 Mac Pro that is. Still, with that said, I mean, for what this is used for, I mean, it this thing cooks along just fine. Everything's snappy. A lot of that's got to do with the Mac OS environment. I mean, you want to just go to simple websites and, and browse. I mean, everything works fine. I mean, let's say I want to go to performance PCs, right? Uh, nope, not performance spa and pools. That doesn't do me good. Performance... PCs. We're gonna look that up here. All right, so I want to go here and I want to browse their web page for some parts. I mean, everything works just fine. It's quick. Doing uh, email is gonna be quick. Uh, uh, even editing the video is smooth. There's no lag whatsoever. Uh, I know some older machines that you get into, there can be lag, and that's where things get frustrated. We got some old PCs at the place I work at. And when you get on those things, it is brutal trying to deal with just doing simple functions as, it, uh, as in just opening up a web browser or doing a search function on the network or any, anything. I mean, really, some computers can be very painful. The feeling of this is, outside of the scores, is it's, it's fine. I mean, there, I can't see anything different in, with regards to snappiness, um, 
response, there's no hang ups, there's no hang time, there's no delay. I mean, everything works great. Uh, you'd notice the performance difference from this old Mac Pro in things like render times, uh, synthetic benchmark scores like, um, I don't know, Cinebench or, you know, Heaven, one of those things. I mean, yes, you'll notice a difference. But still, I mean, you get to see how this compares to today's PCs or top performing items. Yes, a 9900K isn't a fair comparison, but still, you get an idea. I mean, a nine-year-old computer, uh, again, I like it because of Mac OS. If I could just simply take um, PC I'm building with a 9900K or 9700K and my NVIDIA 2080 Ti and build my components the way they are and as opposed to load Windows 10s, I can, or I can load uh, Mac OS easily. Uh, I would do that in a heartbeat. I prefer the software. But again, that's a personal preference. That's all. Uh, anyway, uh, this, I just wanted to give you an example of how it stands, you know, a nine-year-old computer versus today's top-end mainstream consumer-grade uh, parts as a PC goes. Uh, yes, it's apples and oranges but still it's kind of a fun comparison to see how something this old can still function and still function well and serve purposes for what you know I or and I think a lot of people would still use them for. Anyway if you like today's videos and the content you know what to do. If you didn't like it you know what else to do. Uh, please hit that subscribe button for me. Uh, if you got any questions or comments at all please uh, do so below otherwise uh, we'll see you next week.